we're, we're working still in the quadrilaterals. So we're going to be looking at other kinds of quadrilaterals. The rumpus, the rectangle, the square, uh, trapezoid, and kites. Rhombuses, is it rhombuses or rhombi? I am not sure. I'm going with rhombuses. Rhombi. Rhombi? I don't know. Well, well, let's see what these things are. I've got a nice little um, Venn diagram here that um, the parallelograms. I guess no. So what is a rhombus? A rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. This is a definition. So the definition of rhombus is it's a parallelogram. So that means that everything that's in a parallelogram is also in a rhombus, plus it has four congruent sides. A rectangle is also a parallelogram. So again, all the properties of parallelogram apply. Plus, it has four right angles. And a square, again, parallelogram, so all those rules of parallelogram are true for a square. It has four congruent sides and four right angles. So it's these two things put together. It's a rhombus and it's a rectangle, and that makes it a square. So I like looking at this little hierarchy. I don't know how many people here have um, some kind of like programming experience, like software, writing software, anybody? Yeah? So do you know anything about inheritance in like classes? Do you do Java or what, what do you program? Yeah, we haven't worked in classes or anything. Well, it's cool. You, you have, yeah? You can make an Euler diagram with this. I'm thinking more of um, the way like Java and other kind of um, some programming languages work is you define a class and then you make what's a subclass. So everything that's true of this thing is now true of this one as well, plus it has some special properties. So um, parallelograms have all the properties of a quadrilateral plus some other special ones. And we know what they are, right? Sides are congruent, angles are congruent, right? So we've got some special things that apply. Now rhombuses and rectangles are um, subclasses of parallelogram. And what that means is that um, everything that is true for a parallelogram is true for rectangle and rhombus, plus they have some unique properties, which we just talked about. On the sides are congruent, on the angles are right angles. Um, for squares, they're kind of subclasses of all these things. So all the properties for these things are in the square, plus it has some unique properties, which is basically the sides are congruent and the angles are right angles. So um, it's just a way of kind of thinking of a hierarchy of these different quadrilaterals. Uh, these little corollaries are little mini theorems. Uh, basically stating those properties, but in theorem form, the quadrilateral is a rhombus if and only if, by conditional, it has four congruent sides. Which means if you have a quadrilateral with four congruent sides, you have a rhombus, right? Working at the converse. A quadrilateral is a rectangle if and only if, it has four right angles. So if you have a quadrilateral with four right angles, it will be a rectangle, converse is true. And a quadrilateral is a square if and only if, it's a rhombus and it's a rectangle. So if you have a quadrilateral that is a rhombus and a rectangle, then you have a square, converse is true. Alrighty, so again, visiting the properties here, oops. So a rhombus has four congruent sides, we already mentioned that. What else is true? The diagonals bisect the angles. So this will be congruent to that, and this one will be congruent to that one. Now this is a parallelogram, right? Rhombuses are parallelograms. So this whole angle is congruent to that whole angle. So when I bisect the angle, right, these pieces are all congruent. Same thing on this side. This whole angle congruent to that because it's a parallelogram. So when I take the bisected angles, we, we've got some congruence there. Oh, and I, and I forgot, the angle's perpendicular. So once these meet, they meet at 90 degree angles in here. Okay, rectangle. A rectangle, four right angles, we mentioned that already. If you draw the diagonals, they will be congruent. Diagonals are congruent in a rectangle. So when we get to a square that is both a rhombus and a rectangle together, we kind of put it all together. So four congruent sides. Uh, there is a misprint on your notes. So if you're hopefully following along in the middle of the page, you see where they've got these listed out, rhombus, rectangle, square. So under square, it says diagonals bisect each other, which is a true statement because it's a parallelogram, but I meant to put the unique thing there. So the diagonals will bisect the angles because it's a rhombus. So uh, if you draw the diagonals of a square, whoops, 
these are congruent angles. That if this whole thing is 90, so what does it make each piece? 45. So all the way around you get 45 degree angles. Diagonals are perpendicular because it's a rhombus. Four right angles because it's a rectangle. And the diagonals are congruent because it's a rectangle. So you put those properties all together for the square. Everybody find this change? Everybody not know where that is? Uh, what's next? These are some examples here. Um, bottom of the page here. Given a rhombus, so rhombus DEFG, you don't have the picture, but I do, so you can draw your picture in there. Draw that little rhombus DEFG. Are they sometimes always or never true, these following statements? So if you think you know the answer, raise your hand. Is angle D congruent to angle F? Sometimes, always, never. Sometimes, always, never. Zane, what do you think? Always. Always, how come? There you go. Because a rhombus is a parallelogram, that property of opposite angles being congruent is true. So yes, that's an always. How about angle D and angle E? Are they congruent? Oh, sometimes, always, never. Mom, what do you think about that? Sometimes. Sometimes. How come? They certainly don't appear to be. So we know they're supplementary. That's all we know. So for them to be congruent, you would get a square. They'd both be 90. Uh, but they don't have to be. So you know that's a sometimes. Uh, let's see. What about DG and GF? What do you think, Christian? What's an always have to be Yeah, by definition, the, the sides are all congruent, so that will always be, um, always be true. Excellent. All right, let's look at this example here. We want to classify the parallelogram and find missing values. So let's see, let's look at this thing here. Basically, I'm seeing these little markers. So first, let's classify this kind of parallelogram. What is that thing? Rhombus, how come it's not a square? Okay, this is 97 degrees, which means they all can't be 90 degree angles. So it's a rhombus, but it's not a square. Rhombus because all the sides are congruent, which means uh, that this side and this side must be congruent. So I can just set those sides equal. If I subtract 5x, uh, looks like x is 2. Yeah. Okay, and let's see. What about uh, what about this angle here? How do I figure out this? Uh, how would I figure this out, Christian? Excellent. They are supplementary because this is a parallelogram. Rhombuses are parallelograms, so that the consecutive angles are supplementary. So let's see what we get here. 12y uh, plus 96 is 180, right? Which means, which means what? 12y equals 84? Is that right? Y equals 7? Okay. All right, let's look at this guy. Um, this is what kind of a parallelogram? Well, what's the, 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 the best one? The one that is most descriptive, most descriptive? Square. And it's a square because I've got all congruent sides. So that gives me the rhombus part of it. And I've got four right angles, the rectangle part of it. So that's a square. So let's see. All the sides are congruent. So let's start with that. So 2x plus 1 would have to equal 4x minus 7, right? And let's see. That becomes a 2x, adding 7 to both sides. So it looks like x is 4. Stop me if I make a mistake here. Uh, now I have to find y, and y is just pointing to this little piece. So without shouting out, um, raise your hand if you think you know how I can go ahead and find this thing. Uh, Jack, what do you think? Uh, 7y plus 3 is 90. Well, that's the whole thing. 7y plus 3 is just pointing to this little bit of it. Not this whole thing. 45. 45. Now why is it just, why is it half? How do I know it's half? Yep, it's a rectangle, or, yeah, so the diagonal, I'm sorry, rhombus, so the diagonal will bisect. So 7y plus 3 is 45, 
I subtracted 3. Well, it looks like y is 6. Yes? You want that a little bits and pieces there? <coughs> okay. Let's see what the next one is. Here's some more examples. So I've got a rhombus, W, X, Y, Z. And I know that the measure of X, G, Y is 34 degrees. And you know it's a rhombus. So I'm going to kind of mark what I know. Uh, I know that. I know that these are bisected angles. I also know that this is 90 degrees. Uh, for, uh, they are perpendicular. That happens. So they want me to find the measure of W, Z, Z. W, Z, Z. They want this one. Yeah, raise your hand if you think you know. Thomas? 30, 40 degrees. How do you know that? Yeah, in around this, the diagonals bisect the angles. Since one of those pieces is 34, this other one's 34. Would the whole thing be? Okay, 68, right? So we can use those little pieces. W, Y. Oh, they want this length of the diagonal here. Gary? Why is it 14? Yep. Um, and again, that's a parallelogram property, so that still works for a rhombus. X, Y is this little guy right here. Uh, oh boy, how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? Jerry, tell us how. Walk us through it. Okay, there's a right angle here, so this is a right triangle. Okay. Y equals C X Y. C X Y here. Why are these? Why is that three and four? Because opposite angles are congruent. Opposite two angles. angles. Yes. Okay. All right. You're doing the opposite. You're you're finding where you are. So and we Okay. So let's see what we got here. Now this piece here is the hypotenuse, right? And I know this piece is seven, and that's the opposite. So which one do I use? So sine 34 equals 7 over this xy that I'm trying to find. Denominator, we swap these guys, right? 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 Yeah. Okay, so uh, I need my calculator. I'm going to check my mode as soon as I turn it on. Uh, make sure the mode is in degrees. Uh, so 7 divided by the sine of 34, uh, approximately 12.5-ish, 12.52 I guess I should do. So yeah, so all these little things we learned about right triangles will come in handy now because with the rhombus and with the square you get all these little right triangles because of the um, diagonals. Good stuff, all good times. Alrighty, last example on this page. Uh, you've got a rectangle, PQRS, so rectangle. Uh, what do I know about rectangles? All these angles are 90. What's the other thing I know? What do I know? Yeah, yeah question marks, what do I know about them? These diagonals will be congruent. Uh, so let's see. RPS is 62. QS is 18. And you know what I think I'll do? I'll split them off because I think that's easier to see. Now, what do I know about the other diagonal? Yeah, question? It's congruent, so what are the measures there? Yeah. Um, the last class, somebody made a nice observation about, well, then these must always be little congruent triangles, don't they? Because once you find one little piece, you found all those little pieces, and you've got these vertical angles, so you've got all kinds of congruent triangles here. Uh, let's see what we want us to do here. Find the measure of QPR, angle QPR. That's this one right here. Maybe more than one person who knows how to do this. Sarah, what do you think? Yep, the whole angle is 90. So what is that? 28. What is this, 28 degrees? Okay, find the measure of P, T, Q. That's this guy here. Think about that. How's the thing? On um, the angle that is on the QSR. On the QSR. This one? Um, yeah. Oh, no. Uh, you want this one, right? Why is this one 28? 
Well, this one is 28. And well, this is uh, equal uh, isosceles, right? Isosceles triangle? So these are base angles. That's one way to, to get there, right? You know, we probably play with all three interior angles in this year. That one would be 62, right? Sometimes we can get there. But I just noticed for first that they're isosceles, so base angles are kind of Either way, so then if that's 28 and that's 28, how do I find this guy? <coughs> yeah, go ahead, Mark, switch it up. Right. So this whole thing's 180. So 180 minus those two angles of 28. What do we get? What do we get? 124 degrees. That makes sense, right? Because that whole thing is 180. Uh, ST. This guy. Yeah, what's that? Okay. So this is how we can use some of these properties to kind of find the CP. All right. Trapezoid. Trapezoid. Yay. What is a trapezoid? <coughs> a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with one and only one pair of parallel sides. This is important. Only one set of sides is parallel. The other set of sides is not. Parallelograms are not trapezoids because they have two pairs of parallel sides, which is exactly one, one and only one. Like trapezoid. Uh, so a mid-segment, uh, just like a mid-segment in a triangle will connect midpoints, the uh, mid-segment of a trapezoid connects the midpoints of the non-parallel sides. So that's called the mid-segment. You will sometimes see this called a media. They mean that. Uh, an isosceles trapezoid is when the non-parallel sides are congruent. That's an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, so just terminology. And here come the theorems. If a trapezoid is isosceles, then each pair of base angles is congruent. Uh, the base angles are, if this is your, your congruent non-parallel side, these are base angles, and the top ones are also base angles. Congruent, congruent, and congruent, congruent, not congruent. If a trapezoid has a pair of congruent base angles, so it's kind of the converse of this thing, if that's the situation, then you have an isosceles um, trapezoid. Same thing, if that's congruent to that, it is isosceles. <coughs> a trapezoid is isosceles, isosceles if and only if. Bidirectional, the diagonals are congruent. So if it's isosceles, that will be true. If you have a trapezoid with congruent diagonals, then it is isosceles. And then the mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to the parallel sides. So all parallel, and it is the value is the um, average or the mean of the base, the bases. So you add the bases and divide by two, you will get the the length of the mid set. Okay. Fun little theorem. So now let's let's work on applying some of these. So uh, this one is where middle of the page two, middle of page two. The vertices of A, B, C, D are given. Now I did not have room to put a. Uh, a little grid on yours. So you may want to sketch this um, on your notes here. I'm going to actually use this little guy. It's okay if they're not perfect. So it's okay if you sketch it. One, two, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's A. B is one, one, two, three. C is zero, zero. And D is negative seven. So that's fine. What happened? It's like on the next line. It's yeah, it didn't wrap very nice there, but it, it is there. So, it show it's a trapezoid. How do I do that? How do I show it's a trapezoid? I need more than my same three turns out during the questions. Uh, let's see. What do I call on? Who will I call on to show me how I know this is a trapezoid? Oh, wait, want to take this one? Good. You might put this out there. How, how, how can I show? Go ahead and look at the definition of a trapezoid. Do they need to be congruent? What do they need to be? But again, look at 
the definition. What's the definition of a trapezoid? It's a quadrilateral with one and only one pair of parallel sides. How do I show if sides are parallel or not? Slope. Let me find the slopes. Okay, so uh, slope of AB, here's AB, uh, 6 minus 3 is 3, and negative 5 minus 1, negative 6, so negative a half. That's the slope of that one. Slope of BC, 3 minus 0, well, that's just 3. This one I can see what this slope is, right? 0, and if you use uh, CD, that's 0, okay. And then AD, 6 minus 0 is 6. And then uh, negative 5 minus negative 7, that's, that's negative 2. 2, positive 2. So that's 3. So what have I got here? These sides are parallel, and these sides are not. So not only do you have to show um, one side is parallel, you also have to show that the other side isn't. And that's how I know it's a trapezoid. So since um, AD is parallel to BC and uh, AB and BC are not parallel, uh, we have a trapezoid. So it is important, don't just stop by showing one side parallel, you've got to show the other one isn't. Alrighty, this one is last example kind of in the middle there of page two. Find the measure of angle B and the length of PQ. Uh, one thing that's not shown here that should be is I've got two parallel lines here. AB is parallel to DC. It does not show that, so draw that in. So now I have a trapezoid. Oh, I know about this trapezoid. I want to find angle B. What am I going to do here? Gary, what can I do here? Here. Oh, a couple of examples. Um, here's a kite, and I want to find. 
find the measure of Q and S um, in this type? First of all, can I tell where the congruent sides are? Not by how it looks, but by other information? Where are the congruent sides? Thank you. 